So welcome everyone to our fourth anniversary of Power Hour. I am Tessa Chapel coming from Indiana and Megan, who is in Phoenix now. She used to be in Seattle when we started. So uh, tonight we are going to do two layouts. Um, before we start recording, we we're chatting a little bit about kind of how far we've come. So it has been 48 months. This is for month 49, actually. So four years times two layouts is 96 layouts, which is amazing. And so we all have our binders, right? Everyone has a binder. I love the Amy Tangerine ones because they're colorful and kind of different ones. And we were chatting kind of before we went live about what our favorite was, um, which is a hard question because I could actually flip through my binder and tell you which ones I hate that I did. There are some that I like better than others, but I won't lie. Most of Megan's I haven't made and I'll never make, but there is one that actually, actually is still on my to-do list. I will make someday. Which one do you think that is? Any guesses? I know. Well, as if she's ever going to make my layouts fall in love. It's the soccer one. So this was February of 22. And she did the big soccer balls. And so, of course, it could be adapted in many ways. But I had one season, one season of soccer with my three children. <laughs> so yeah. we got, I got one soccer layout. I know. I will make that one someday. I was trying to flip through here, like looking at which ones I've liked. I think most recently, like last October, I really liked that one, which was the um, kind of that brick, vertical brick style. That was pretty easy to do. But I liked my Sweet on You ones, too. And I think that was like February. I think it was I did two in a row last year. It's like I it had the have to go corner. Yeah, I would have to go um, through and look through the photos of them um, and see which one was probably my favorite. I, I, this is, Tessa and I will be chatting about things and there'll be times where it'll be like, well, we got to get working on Scrapbook Live or not, uh, Power Hour. And I'm like, I don't even remember what I did last month. Like, I just literally wow. cannot even tell you what I made last month for Power Hour. I have to get my phone out and scroll through my photos to remind myself or go back through some other ones. Like, you know, what, what did, what did, what tools have we used? What techniques have we done? You know, trying not to be too repetitive. Um, but inevitably there's going to be some repeats. Um, I know mine tonight has, you know, some elements of, you know, the four square images on a 12 by 12, like, okay, def definitely have done that, um, uh, uh, a concept where before. So sometimes it's just finding new techniques within the similar, similar concept. Yeah, or that's making why I you encourage get everyone tools. to make the binder because... We, if we can't remember, I know you can't either. So it would feel new yeah. to flip back through and find them. Here I am looking at September 22. I actually used Vintage Chic back when it was actually still vintage. So if you want some ideas for Vintage Chic, September 22, now that we even have that collection again. I don't know. What month did I just say was um, the soccer? Uh, February of 22 was the soccer one. Yeah, February 2022. I have actually kept up with my calendar pages. There was a question in the chat. I, I did Simply Scrappy um, not that long ago, showing off my calendar pages, which are pretty up to date. Um, those are, I like to do those too. They they are fun. Um, yeah, I like the old ones. And like Megan said, I usually forget and I have to flip back through and like, it's like, oh, that was cute. Or I, I find my layouts in the albums. I'm like, my albums are so much prettier now that I teach classes because otherwise they would be real plain back in old style um so yeah we're gonna figure out if she doesn't figure it out i'll do it when she's working because she's gonna eat her dinner which ones are most downloaded on the website i have a feeling i know this um but but we'll see if we can figure it out so tonight we're gonna make two layouts again um i think megan and i are kind of like the old married couple neither of us got each other a gift neither of us got a cake I don't even have anything in my head. Last year I had my, I can't find my ear things. I spent all day shipping, literally seven hours. And so I'm like pulling out papers. as like a logging on to Zoom, trying to figure out what I'm going to even do tonight. So um, yeah, I think we're just old and married now. And like the excitement of the anniversary is worn off. But we can have the party with all of you. I don't, it feels festive even with nothing. So um, yeah, if you have any questions or anything, you can put them in the chat. Um, we're happy to do. Um, I know a lot of you know all the everything about us, but um, if there's anything you want to know, yeah, let me know. Yeah, Kelly, you're right. The honeymoon is over. <laughs> I don't know how long our honeymoon lasted. Did we actually ever have a honeymoon? A year, maybe? 
leading up to it, I don't know, about three days, she says, yeah, <laughs> neither of us are do them. So, okay, we can go and get started with my layout. And I won't lie, I'm not like, I'm not totally, we're going to be working through this together as I decide which elements to use. So I will flip my camera down to my table. There we go. Move it so I can see myself. Okay, so the layout I did in the handout actually was using a mix of autumn harvest and sweater weather. And I really liked how it turned out. I kind of had it, I don't know where I thought of it, but I just wanted to use some thin elements to create what looks to be borders on the top or bottom, but they're kind of a good way to use up um just odds and ends that you have maybe find a skinny border punch of course you can use any thicker element that you want just the thicker like the border punch you might use you're going to have less room for photos in the center so you just want to be mindful of like how much space are you really trying to save for your layout when you're choosing your elements so um just a fun way to go through and and pull things out when you do choose your elements, it is nice to pick, you know, four or five different options. So that can be a mix of paper, which is mostly what I have here. I did pick out one print, a tonal, a cardstock, um, a chain border maker, and then I have a little great length sticker up here. So if you have some border stickers, that, that would be a nice layout for that too. But then when you choose your base paper, you're going to make sure you have a good contrast between all of your elements. This looks like actually a Spargo page. It's actually an old cardstock called Wild Oats. And then once we do the top and the bottom, you kind of have this whole middle spot open that you can fill with your photos and depending on your photo layout if you want to add in some of the paper you can pull you know large mats in or kind of tie it all together so I um, would love to actually finish these pages I did make this side by side but I don't have all of them printed have you guys ever gone to like get your photos and then you realize like I'm not sure these are actually all my photos so these were the photos I printed were the ones my mom sent me and the ones I took were a little higher up in the camera roll and stuff like that just annoys the crap out of me when I like think I have my photos all printed and then I really don't have them but tonight, I thought, when I was flipping through, Megan had suggested that we either do Halloween or birthday. And I was like, well, my Halloween years are kind of waning. But I did go back and look, and I do have, I did have quite a few pictures from 2023. I'm going to have to print some more of them. I just printed these literally as I was longing on my Epson, just so I could kind of get idea of the colors that we had. But so when I was going through my stash, this is what I found. This was the original Wicked Cute layout from that very first class. Do you guys remember this? I don't even think it's on the website. So if you didn't attend it, you probably didn't get it. And so I took so many photos from this night. I probably can do four pages. So I thought this would be a nice opportunity to actually use my Wicked Cute page. And so I'm trying to use up remnants tonight from Wicked Cute. And the nice thing about it is that it had washi tape. So if you have any washi tape or maybe you have paper ribbon from old Creative Memories, a perfect use for that to choose as a border element. So I know I have some purple in my photos. You know, I have some yellow in there, so I think this collection will work pretty well. Like I said, I'm not going to really be able to put all my photos on there. Um, I was a little bit torn. Megan was talking to me, and I was like, I'm trying to figure out my base paper. You have to stop talking to me. I think I'm going to go with purple because my elements had black. I thought I was going to use black, but I found this bat border sticker. I have some extra of this paper that pulls in some of that teal color. Unfortunately, the backside with the pumpkins is vertical, so I'd have to rotate it to use that. And I also have some of the starry paper, some stripes on the back, and then I pulled out my ghost border maker because it's pretty thin. I could punch that with some white shimmer. And then I have all the wicked cute washi tapes. So. I might get carried away and use more than four border elements. We'll see. So I decided to go with purple. None of these had purple in them, but it would be a good color for my base paper. 
So I just have to think about, you know, how much space do I want to have? The reality is I don't really know. So I'm just going to go based on my elements. So I'm going to choose on my layout. I told you, you know, the thinner, the better, really, when it comes to paper. Um, I gave you the measurements I use. Those blue texture strips are three eighths of an inch. And um, the leaf print was half an inch. And you just want to, if you're using a print and you want to kind of capture the whole print, I would just like measure you know, how much, how wide do you need to capture the print? I'm going to have a little bit of the starry in there. So I don't need the super wide, but I feel like a half inch probably is going to be a good option to give me a good sampling of the stars. If I get too thin, it's just going to show a lot of black. I'm going to go ahead and cut four of these. So I have two for each side, top and bottom. It's a little tricky when your papers get thin. Okay, so I have four strips. I could also flip if I want to use the stripes, or maybe I should just try to cut this in half, actually, and use the stripes at the same time. So I have about seven eighths left. So half of seven eighths is a little less than half an inch. What I might do is actually just glue this down the middle of my strip because we all know it's virtually impossible to cut a thin strip in half. So at the risk of pulling out my straight blue trimmer, I'm going to just adhere it to my trimmer. And I cut that in half and then I can just wipe off any repo tape. And so I'll just go ahead and use up the rest of that paper. That will feel good. Um, my bats are pretty thin. And then I want a little bit of this paper. Um, one option I thought, since it's kind of plain, just with that hash mark, I could use a decorative blade. Um, maybe the stamping would give it a little bit of shape to it. I'm going to cut with the stamping blade. So I first have to give myself a little stamping edge. And then I need to flip this to actually give stamping on the other side. Someone said it earlier, but I do agree that I think one of my favorite things about Power Hour is the ability to use old collections. I'm not trying to sell you on anything current, obviously, because if I was, I would use Booya. But the reality is I have so much Halloween paper and my days of Halloween are waning that I don't really want to open Booya. I know I shouldn't say that out loud. I got to use up what I have first. So that gives me two of those. I could do one for each side. I might, it's going to get kind of thin. I don't know if I can really get it. A little tricky, but choosing the stamping blade. They keep having to flip the edges. I don't think I'm going to get two more out of there. So I might, I could probably switch just straight if I wanted to, but I'll just save it. I can maybe just do one on each side. I put my straight blade back in. So that gives me three elements. Um, I have my washi tape. And I'm going to punch my ghost out of white shimmer. What collections did you guys pull out to use tonight? Anybody else doing Halloween or birthday? I don't really know what Megan's using for hers. She probably told me and I wasn't really listening. Because that's the kind of married couple we are. We say a lot of things to each other and don't really listen. Yeah, she told me. I just don't remember what she told me. That's the problem. Didn't process. I do listen to her sometimes. So I will just start by probably using the ghost on the bottom. I don't want to like get too thick, so I'm just going to do ghost on one end. 
So I can start looking at my elements and seeing how I want to lay them out. On my demo one, I had that blue color and I, I put it towards the bottom, kind of ground the layout. So you're just going to kind of want to look to color, see if the colors you have, space them out a little bit. I, I think, again, using this black towards the bottom, it's kind of a heavier color. And then I can mix in. I probably just want to keep my white ghost and the white paper away from each other. I need to clean this up a little bit. I can't wait for those micro scissors to come back in stock in December because I've lost mine on my desks or somewhere. I don't know where they are. And then I could bring in the stripes. I should now I kind of wish I'd varied the size of these a little bit, but it's fine. You just have to play with it and see what do you, you like best. And then do I want to use any washi tape? So I definitely want to use my little meow cats if I can, although I already have a lot of black and white. I have the black and white polka dots. I have the teal color. I have the orange. I could use a combination of all of them. So looking back at my, this one, you can see I have five layers here, but one of them's pretty thin. I have four at the top. Two of those are pretty thin. So as you feel yourself commit to something, you just want to glue it down. And I ran out of tape. I'm going pretty close to the bottom edge. I'm just going to space it up about an eighth of an inch. I don't need much room. It helps to have the 13 by 13 mat. If I do want to add some washi tape down here, I might want to float my ghost up one more layer. I think, I don't know, do I want to, I, if I use it down here, I'm going to have these stripes and stripes might be a bit much. I need a little bit difference of texture. Um, maybe the orange would actually look best. I really want to use my cats, but I think I have enough black and white. Same with the polka dots. I'm just getting a little bit too monochromatic. So I could do, maybe I'll do orange washi above here. Does anyone actually ever use up a thing of washi tape? I feel like it lasts forever because I don't use it very much. The nice thing about it is you can just tear it and bend it around the back of your layout. I could float my ghost above there. So what happened? I didn't quite decide before I came on. Five is going to get pretty thick if I really use all these layers. Maybe I'll just put the stamping at the top and finish it off with stripes. I'll go with that. And then I have to look at the top and think, what do I want to replicate up here? So I have my my um, stars. I want to, I can use this piece, and then I could use my washi tape across the top also. So it's going to be easier if I just flip it around. You could say I'm the husband in a relationship. I won't lie. Megan doesn't really listen to me that very much either. So. Maybe we both take turns being the husband.
I do want to use, I was, I really wanted to use up one of my great length stickers up here too. Maybe I have like the teal or something I could pull. Megan says she remembers everything I say, but do you really? She probably does. She does have a pretty good memory. And sometimes she likes to go back in our chat and point out to when she actually told me something. Sometimes I scroll back up in our message thread to find the answer so I don't have to ask her again. Okay, so that gives me quite a bit of space. The only thing I don't love is this one. And now I'm thinking maybe I was so intent on using one of my great length stickers, I could run it down the center of that. Um, this is what my folder looks like. So I'm not sure I'll make you guys all wait while I flip through here. Do you guys all have this many of them still off though? Um, I probably, this might be a little bright, but I'm thinking maybe I'll, I could go through and find that teal color. And then I get excited when I find a sheet I can use. Um, so when she's uh, running her mouth, I'll go through those and see if I can find one to run down the center of that. Oh yeah, the bats, you're right. Where's my bat stickers? See, so, yeah, what would I do without you guys to keep me on track? I buried them. Yeah, I have my black bats. Oh, maybe I could just run the bats down the center. That would be cute. Good idea, Marsha. That will look perfect. And it fits perfectly. It's as if I planned it. There, thank you. That's perfect. I don't know how well you guys can really see. How those bats kind of look going there. So I've successfully have several colors. I have the black, I have the orange, I have a little bit of teal. I kind of balanced out the designs top and bottom. I had I used the ghost, which is kind of the fat or heavier designs. So I kept that on the bottom. I have my little bats at the top, which are lighter. So that works well. So I'll recreate it for my other side. But when I go through my photos, you know, I have here, if I want to pull some into the center. Emerson or Emerson Campbell and her friends actually did go trick or treating. So if I wanted to use maybe how to showcase their pictures on this page, you know, do I want to use a mat or not? I definitely have space. And depending on how much space you left yourself with your top and bottom, I have about seven inches. If you guys keep it um, a little bit thinner and you have eight by eight papers that you want to use up, it's a good spot to dump those in there. Um, I think it would be fun to bring in some shimmer. I don't really have big sheets of paper left out of Wicked Cute, but I could maybe use a black shimmer that would play off the shimmer or just solid black, charcoal, any ideas? This is what plain black would look like. which of course would be fine. But I think shimmer would be more fun. Oh, the orange shimmer too. I just have to make sure I just, there's a lot of color going on in the pictures, um, which is kind of why I was thinking black. I feel like if I do orange, it's going to really pull out maybe too much color. I do have room also to trim these down. So I want to take every opportunity to show everyone I'm still using my photo trimmer. I will lie. I, I do actually think I might keep using it. I'm trying very hard to retrain my brain to look on this side for what I'm cutting off or on. Which is a little bit of a mental challenge. So like I have to look at this. I'm like, okay, I'm cutting it down to five and an eighth. And, but then I have to remember I'm cutting this one down to five and an eighth. I like the sound. I think that's why I like it. So it's very gratifying.
Let's see if I even have black shimmer close at hand. I don't know if I do or not. I'm I might have to get up and get it. I'm real I have every color of cardstock beside me, except I don't have all of the shimmers out yet. But when I do wrap this up, I do have these stickers too. So I will plan to cut some black shimmer on that on those. And then I can pull in more of the orange off of the stickers too. Kind of tuck those in and around. <laughs> I know I it is a selling point. It's a big deal. Like tell credit memories. I do like it. I like the sound. It is very therapeutic. What's that called when like uh, all those videos of just about the sound, like people like listen to them for the sounds that all the stuff make my kids do that. There's some word that all that means. And I think the trimmer um, is like that ASMR. Is it just initials? A do you just say ASMR? And what does that mean? Does that stand for something? Megan's just typing in the chat. She's like, I don't know, Google. I'll Google it while she goes. So I guess I'm going to have to leave it at that. So I will go find my black shimmer and then I'm going to decorate around it with a little bit of stickers and then I'm going to repeat it for the other side. So I do look forward to seeing what elements you choose and what you use up on your layout. And hopefully you have some pieces that you can throw away or, or be done with with that. I'll see if Megan is even ready because that gives her plenty of time. I am ready. Okay. I'm the I'm the prompt person in the relationship. <laughs> That's true. If, we, we're, if we're sitting here assigning, you know, things. Oh, look, Karen. Oh, look, we have people who are willing to Google it for us. Um, I was wanting. I'll let that show up in somebody else's Google history, not mine. I mean, most, most of the stuff that is the ASMR is very uh, innocent. There are some stuff I'm just going to say that's maybe not so innocent. So um, yes, I'm Megan Jax. Thanks for joining us um, out here. It's still rather warm uh, Phoenix, but we're, we're getting there. It's going to be 66, a high of 66 on Saturday. I'm going to have to find my pants. Um, like the long pants. I have shorts, obviously, but um, got to find the uh, cooler weather clothes. It's been a long time since we had to wear them. Uh, so the project today is really funny. As I got going with it and I'm putting the hand out together and I'm pretty much committed to this, there's, there's some aspects of it to me that felt kind of um, similar um as Tessa and I mentioned that you know some, we forget we we do things um and uh we forget so I was you'll see I have some boxes now behind me I was digging through some layouts trying to find my favorite layout I knew kind of which one was one of my favorites and um I wanted to I'll share it with you guys I'm gonna flip to my screen but I did I'm you can see Tessa, she's not even, she's not even going to pretend like she's going to go on the website and find out which one was the most popular, but I did. December of 2020, for those of you who are question, who are wondering, all of our power hours, the handouts are available as downloads. So you can go back and find our very first one from October of 2020. You can find it. It is out there. And December of 2020, and I will tell you kind of, um, I think one of the reasons it is the most popular one, it's one of our oldest. So it's had the most time to be the number of downloads. Also, it has, um, it was before our uh, email list got so large. So a lot of you that are newer to us um, and maybe have joined us in the last three years, you weren't, you didn't, you had to go to the website to download it. So that was one of the ways that, you know, why it's a higher download account. The other part was during the first few months of doing Power Hour, creative memories actually there was a couple places where we were able to share our layouts before we got the ideas and inspiration group up and running and so we did have a few more viral moments um, that was one of them with the content that kind of pushed people to really want that download that layout so now um, they're all fairly close it's not like this is a runaway um, favorite but it is listed as the one that is more than um, uh, more popular in terms of downloads. I would say now if we were to have like a competition, um, there might be other ones that have been a little bit more um, popular since then. But anyway, 
So, so right. you're saying that we have, so the most popular download was which one? The, December of 2020. I mean, you can, you can verify it. You can double, you can be the wife. who We weren't on the us. website yet then. I am just telling you when we created the website and Are we put everything on back? there, the one, the product that shows up as the most popular download is December, 2020. So anyway, um, let's dive into this. Uh, I'm going to switch over here to my overhead camera and we will show you what we've got going today. So here is um, my projects or my project. And I did start off with some fall concepts, right? I thought, oh, well, first of all, I had a piece of um, Croptoberfest paper left over. So I decided to play with that and the now retired pumpkin frame punch. But that's kind of what I started to build this on. And then I did a Halloween version because one, Booyah is super cute. I do like it. It's got some really fun prints in it, really nice colors. And I wanted to play with the other frame, one of the other frame punches that is still available, which is a spider web frame punch. The layout I'm going to show you tonight really does, uh, it's kind of dependent on using a frame punch, the things that we're going to talk about. Now, uh, I was going to be prepared to demo for you the um, using the decorative trimmer if you wanted to. But then I realized as I was digging through these boxes behind me trying to find one of my favorite layouts that I kind of already did that concept. This, I believe, was a one we did a while ago, maybe about a year ago. Um, I probably demoed it or I did the example in the uh, pink and powerful or that may this may have been the uh, tonal pinks. Similar concept, but using the decorative trimmer. So if you do not have a frame punch and you're wanting to do something similar, you can use the decorative trimmer. Um, this, this, I'd have to go back and look and see which specific month this was, but it's kind of a similar concept. So anyway, let's, we'll dive into the handout. I am seeing some people saying that they had a little bit of difficulty with um, the handout and hopefully walking you through each individual step will help clarify some things for you. If you need additional clarification, you can certainly type those questions in, in the chat um, so that I can answer them for you. So the one thing to note, as I mentioned before, you are going to want to hopefully use one of your frame punches. Creative Memories has had several of them over the past few years, so you hopefully have one of them in your uh, collection. How you know it's a frame punch is you're going to see on the wing, if I could show here, where is it? There is my lighting tonight. There's a line down the middle of the, the design. That's how you know that it's a frame punch. If you keep your boxes or you label your um, punches, it will have the word frame in the name. We've had all sorts of them. We've had a geometric frame punch. We've had obviously spider webs. We've had Baroque. We've had um, uh, the, new, the one of the most recent ones that we've had is uh, the spring leaf is available and um, some of uh, snowflake. There's a, there was a snowflake one. So some options to go with some various themes. So tonight I wanted to use, um, and that's, I actually told Tessa, <laughs> see, I, I got distracted. I told Tessa I was going to do spring, but then as we were talking before we started, she reminded me that we had talked about doing fall and then, or birthday. And then I was like, well, you know, oh, bummer, because I didn't want to open up my autumn cottage because we're saving that for class. I don't have extras of the paper packs. So I'm sorry, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do spring because I've already pulled those papers. I got distracted with other stuff and did not pull some older Croptoberfest to use with the spring leaf. Because I think if you do use spring leaf in fall colors, it's just gonna look fallish, even though it's called spring leaf. Just think of it in terms of leaves. So I will be using it with the birds and blossoms. I thought this would actually be a fun layout that maybe I would try to get some pictures of birds. Um, I don't normally take a lot of photos of birds, but I figured I can come up with four square photos. So I chose a paper. I like the concept of choosing a paper that has a little bit more of a tonal pattern on one side and the other side can have a design. One thing to note is um, if you have a pattern that has a direction to it and you have that pattern be on the back and that's what you fold forward, you will have pieces of it be upside down through the folding process. 
if I had done my spider webs here and I had done those patterns, uh, the um, icon prints as the back part that folded forward, I would have where you see the purple coming through, I would have some upside down cats and hats and bats and so forth. So you're going to um, want to make sure you have your frame punch figured out some paper, you're gonna to wanna to have some other solid colors. This technique works well if you have a solid or a, a very tonal base to it. That's gonna what's gonna allow the pattern of your frame punch come through. A lot of the frame punches, maybe except for dollop frame punch, have a pretty intricate pattern to them. So we wanna make sure we have something solid behind it, more than likely to make sure that that pattern comes through. So uh, step number one in this whole thing is I talk about we need to measure how deep our frame punch cuts because all of the frame punches, I don't, they don't all cut differently, but they have the potential to cut differently. And you'll see that when you look at the back of them. So you see here with spider webs, you see that the bottom of the edge really is nice and flat. It comes, it just really just is tight along the edge. That's the same thing for uh, the geometric frame punch is very similar. Now you flip over here and you look at something like spring leaf. Look where the pattern starts to come below into the body of the paper. It's not just right on the edge. It's going to punch a little bit into the body of the paper. Same thing for the uh, pumpkin. You can see that it punches a little bit below where we would assume the straight line edge of our paper is. So that is important to note. So how do you know? Well, one of the ways you can do, you're, you're trying to get a measurement. That's in step one, we wanna find the measurement. So step one, you need to measure, you can either use a ruler on the back of your punch and you're looking, you're, measuring how far that bite comes down. So on the, uh, the spider web punch, you can see here that it's about an inch, just a little, maybe a little bit over, an, it's about an inch or so deep that it cuts the spider web itself from edge of the paper to the edge of this, um, where it's gonna cut is about an inch. So I wanted to give myself an additional uh, quarter to three eighths of an inch past that mark past the edge of the paper. So for spider web, I would probably want to cut about an inch and three eighths, maybe an inch and a half. That's gonna give me, you can see here, that's gonna give me space for my punch and for a little bit of spacing between where I'm gonna cut, because that's what we're measuring. We're measuring to find out where this cut's gonna go. If I come over here, and I look at pumpkin, to get that same spacing here, I had to have a much, I had to cut a little bit deeper into the paper. So for spider web, my cut would be, I could say an inch and a half. So I would write down one and one half inch, and you just had to have to keep track of that. I actually think I cut it at a, an inch, and yeah, I cut it at an inch and a half. I can tell in my pay, uh, uh, photo number two. You can also, if you don't want to use your ruler, looking at the back of your paper or uh, the back of your ruler on the back of your punch, you can just take a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to go ahead and punch the corner. So to do that, I'm going to line up the edge of my paper with a silver line on the edge of my, on the wing of my punch. And I'm going to go ahead and punch once, rotate this edge over here. I'm going to line up on the left side in that silver line. All I need is just one corner. That's all I'm worried about. I do want my extra little pieces here because it's important to put those back in there. This is what's gonna let me measure from the outside edge to the inside of my cut mark, the bite mark of my punch. Get my ruler back out. I can see here, I put my ruler on. And I need to come down, if I my overall top edge of my paper to the bottom of my punch is an inch and a half. I wanna give myself a little bit of room. I'm only gonna give myself a quarter of an inch. I wanna leave room for photos. So I'm gonna come in here to an inch and three quarter. 
So I can take my pencil, an inch and three quarter is the, the size I need for my spring leaf. So I'm gonna make my note that my measurement for step number one is an inch and three quarter. An inch and three quarter. If you have something like frame punch, or excuse me, um, spider webs, or you're using geometric, it's probably gonna be a little bit closer to an inch and a half. In all honesty, if you use an inch and three quarter, you're gonna be just fine. So I have that mark now. So what does that mean? That inch and three quarter, or excuse me, the inch and a half that I'm going to punch is where I'm punching each of my corner pieces or my corner bits that I'm gonna do. So my first measurement, grab my trimmer. If you want to use a decorative blade, you can. This is a time for you to use one of those decorative blades. I'm gonna use Colonial. I thought it would look nice with kind of the springy festive atmosphere of the um, this paper. So an inch, an inch and a half is my piece. If you need to do this technique for the first time on scratch paper, grab one of your cover sheets from one of your paper packs and you can use that. You're gonna test it. You're gonna, if you've never done this technique before where we're just partial cutting in each of the corners, do it on a scrap piece of paper first. So I have an inch and a half. I need to come here and line up my paper at an inch and a half below, if you have your paper turned, your trimmer turned horizontally, it's an inch and a half below the cut line. Or if you have it turned vertically, it's going to be a, um, Thing. So yes, I see you guys saying, isn't it an inch and three quarters? Thank you. An inch and three quarters. And Virginia's just like, stop. Chris is like, it's an inch and three quarters. I'm going to come down to an inch and three quarters. Thank you ladies for that. Inch and three quarters. So I've got my paper lined up here at an inch and three quarters. I need to find an inch and three quarter to start my cut. So I can bring my white line over on my bar here to an inch and three quarter. Make sure your paper is all the way to the top, to the logo side of your uh, trimmer bed. Come over here to an inch and three quarter. I can see it here. I want to cut from an inch and three quarter all the way down to five and three quarter. I mentioned that in step three. Every single, no matter your starting point, your ending point is always going to be five and three quarter. It will always stay the same. If you start at an inch and a half, that's fine. If you, you want to end up at five and three quarter. If you start it at one and three quarter, you're still going to stop at five and three quarter. That's the hardest part of this whole thing right now. Just what we just did after this, everything is repetitive. So take your time to get to this spot. Line your paper up at the bottom at whatever your measurement was for step one. Start your cut at whatever that measurement was. Mine happens to be an inch and three quarter. And regardless of where your start is, you're gonna end at five and three quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead, push down, and I'm gonna pull over to five and three quarter. If you need to, you could go ahead and put a binder clip in there to help you know where to stop every single time. Let me grab one. Maybe. There, I can feel one, there it is. The find where that five and three quarters is. I'm gonna put my binder clip just to the left side of it. Then I'll stop in the same spot every single time. Okay, so I made one cut. I'm gonna rotate my paper 90 degrees, line it back up, same place. For me, that's an inch and three quarters. I'm gonna start my cut at an inch and three quarter, going all the way to five and three quarters or my binder clip. If you're using a decorative blade, make sure you give yourself a good amount of pressure. Um, decorative blades are not forgiving if you don't get it cut all the way through. You'll have a little bit more difficulty um, uh, more difficulty cutting out the decorative edge if you have to snip it with scissors. So I see Kim is asking, do you stick your paper to the end 
no matter what the measurement is. And so do you mean over here to this side, pushing it all the way to the right? Yes, you will want to make sure your paper is pushed all the way to the right, that um, pushed to the side that has the, um, to the uh, logo. And that way when, because zero is right here, zero this direction and zero this direction, zero this direction is right here. If you come down here and you have it pushed over here to the left, your measurements will be a little bit off. So I need to keep rotating, rotate and cut. You're gonna do four on this side, four cuts on this side. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my paper over to the opposite side. I wanna see the reverse now. And you repeat all those same four cuts. I'm lining up whatever my measurement was for step one. Inch and three quarters. And I'm just gonna rotate. And what I'm gonna start to see is my corners come away from the paper. I have one more cut to do. You just repeat all four cuts all the way around. So like I said, once you get the technique down, these, these partial cuts, it, it's just very repetitive. There we go. We've got all four corners all set to go. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and punch this using our frame punch. We're gonna punch a frame punch. You can punch, um, it turns the corners as long as your sides are even numbers. Two, uh, well, two doesn't really work, but four, six, eight, and 12 inches. You can use your frame punch. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna make sure, make sure you've done all that work. Make sure you start. You wanna make sure you're starting with the edge of your paper at the silver line. We, When we're using this as a frame punch, do not pay attention to these top, these front pieces, do not. Your guide is here on the wing. There is nothing worse than starting in the wrong spot when you've done all of this other effort. And I do recommend doing the, the uh, cutting first before you do the punching. It makes the cutting part much easier. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up with punch and then just keep working my way around. I'm gonna punch I think it's like five punches for a 12 inch piece. You wanna make sure you see over here, I guess it, I don't know if it matters if you make that punch, you've cut it, punch it one last time, but you really wanna make sure you have an edge here. Yeah, you don't wanna punch here because you're gonna turn the corner. All right. Yes, I see a question. Whatever your measurement is in step one, whatever you determine the bite of your punch to be, write it down somewhere near step one. And that's what you use for the other measurements. So my picture, because I use spider webs, shows that I use an inch and a half. But because I'm using a different punch, I'm using spring leaf, I need to use that inch and three quarter. That's why it's important to, to go ahead and kind of figure it out. If you don't want to take the time to measure, use an inch and three quarter. Um, that should work with all of the frame punches regardless. You just might have a bigger border between your photos and your designs. So we're going to keep going all the way around. Just keep on going. Depending on the punch you're using, you might want to keep your little pieces that are falling out. Um, spring leaf isn't necessarily one of those that I'm going to worry about trying to piece together the leaves. Pumpkin, the pumpkin frame, it does have little pumpkins that pop out. Um, 
uh, uh, snowflake it has little snowflakes that pop out. So those can be fun to work in as well. One more side to do, and then I'll have it all. Just keep on working around. Okay. So now I've got the whole thing punched. Now this is where you want to go ahead and maybe um, experiment a little bit with cardstock colors to determine what's going to work best for you. I like the blue. I know I'm going to use blue. I'm just not sure if I'm going to use blue, the um, starry shimmer. That's what I have here. I kind of like the shimmer. I was going to use some other shimmer in here as accents, or if I want to just go ahead and use blue cardstock. Blue cardstock is a little bit darker. I was actually a little bit concerned that it was too dark. So what I'm going to do before I commit to my background paper, I'm going to go ahead and fold my pieces forward. I'm going to grab my cutting mat to do this. And you really just go ahead and line it up on here. I don't know how much it really matters. If you take the time to line it up perfectly, um, you can kind of see, depending on how your corners work out, that that'll help guide you. And then you're just going to pull your pieces down and you want to try to get them to be cooperative and be, um, make a square or not make a square. You want them to line up square with each other, right? So I'm looking to see if I can have an even spacing of these folds all the way across. Yeah. So Kay's saying, suggesting the blue shimmer. I do think I'm going to use the shimmer. I think it's just pretty, especially if I am going to resort, save this for some pictures of birds. I think that'll look really pretty. And you just wanna fold these pieces to the middle. It folds to the middle. Now, starting to see how this takes shape, but I'm gonna use the shimmer, the blue shimmer the starry shimmer. So what I will next, I just need to go ahead and use some adhesive on here to go ahead and get it secured to my background. Using some repo along the design. And then if you wanna come in with regular adhesive in the middle, work. I'm going to go ahead and line up my starry shimmer on my cutting mat. And that's just going to make sure that I can use my cutting mat to help get things lined up. Trying to center this as best as possible. go. Now, the next thing you want to do is depending on where you did your measurements, you need to measure, you need to cut your mats to go on top of here. I am not sure. I need maybe you guys to help. Should I use orange shimmer or should I use um, gold shimmer? Gold shimmer really works. It's a nice warm gold that works with the orangey um, yellow that's in the flowers versus orange shimmer, which also looks really nice. Uh, Jenny is saying that, oh, you guys are saying I should use gold. Okay, I'll use gold. I am going to use a straight edge. When I cut this, I think that's going to be a nice contrast to the decorative element, the decorative edge that I have here. Felicia likes orange. Well, to be fair, I do have, I have some extra, I have a scrap of orange. So maybe I could do a two gold, two orange. The thing you want to do here is if you have that decorative blade change out, I do need to grab my ruler and I want to, I'm going to open up my square here, my folded, and I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to measure how wide my square is. My square is four inches wide. So I want to make sure my mat has room to expose those things. And I'm going to go, I'm going to, 
I think that just a quarter inch smaller is not quite enough. I've done all this work to fold these papers. I wanna make sure you can see the pretty pattern here. So I'm gonna take this down, not to three and a half. I'm gonna to go to three and five eighths square. I think that's actually the measurement I used. Um, yeah, the fall sample, I used a mat that was three and five eighths. So I'm gonna do that three and five eighths inch is going to be my, so three and then five eighths is just past that half inch mark. And I need a total of four, well, we'll try two and two because you guys are saying maybe two of each. Three and five eighths. Why not? I like the orange in there. I think it's just such a beautiful color. Three and five eighths. We'll do the, um, I do, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these pieces into place. I do have a note in there where I talk about, if you feel like you're not getting enough contrast between your background here and your uh, pretty design cuts here, I mentioned where you could cut a uh, four and a half inch square and tuck it in behind the pieces here. You'll see that, that I did in my example. This one, I tucked in this piece. And the reason was is because the tonal orange here was kind of blending in. You didn't see the pretty, um, uh, decorative cut that was on this edge. So by putting a four and a half inch square rotating in there, um, tucking it in, it gave some nice contrast. It was a great way to bring in extra color. I could do that if I really wanted to. I could even, this is just the, you know, the three and five eighths. I could bring that in and tuck it in here. I mean, there's lots of ways you can play around with this to make it work for you. Both the yellow and the orange are nice complements to the green and the blue. So that is how this layout comes together. As I mentioned before, you could come in here with the middle with a contrasting piece if you wanted to. I actually think it might be fun if I were to go ahead and do all gold here, but maybe go orange in the middle. That might be an option. So if you're not sure, maybe go ahead, instead of using regular adhesive here um, to fold these corners back, go ahead and use um, repo adhesive. It'll make it a little bit easier. You can just use your uh, multi-purpose tool and get in under here and kind of just open those back up if you need to, if you feel like you need that contrast. I didn't realize I would need it until I got it put together and folded. And I'm like, wait a minute, you can't see the wave blade that I used to cut those um, corners. So I wanted to make sure it was available. All right. That's all I've got for you guys tonight. Um, a little bit of a whirlwind there, maybe a little bit more complicated than, uh, as Tessa would say, that's kind of how I role sometimes to make things um, a little more, I don't know, you got to use your frame plants, you got to use your decorative blades, all that fun stuff. So you sit, around, um, you sit around and you're like, how can I make this tool and make it really confusing? But then the outcome, when everyone gets it done, they think it's great and they forget the pain that was involved with making it. That's what I think yeah. you do. That's, that's the goal. I want you to use the tools. I want you to think next time there's a frame punch that comes available. Oh my gosh, I know what I can do with this. Um, so, cause the frame punches to me are a little bit more ornate. And so showing them off in their frame format is fun. The other thing I would note on this, you could do, if you really needed to, you could cut this sucker in half down the middle 
measure before you just automatically cut it six inches to make sure you have everything centered. And then you split this in half across two pages. So that's also an option that you could do if you wanted to flank, um, you know, make this into a two page spread. You just take those sections and cut them over. So, you know me, I'm always good for a layout like that, that we have the four corner things in there, playing with the tools, using it in the cutting things and um, new ways. Guys, I want you to be confident using your tools so that no project seems to be too complex for you. You know you can do it. So how's your layout coming? Did you get it all figured out? Yeah, I just, I don't know. I had them lined up when I did the top knot. Luckily, washi tape comes off easily because it ended up not being aligned that very well. Oh yeah, no. that was me. Yeah, doing a layout last week, like trying to put like a stupid zoo fence on. I mean, I couldn't like. I've obviously should have used a T square. Um, I have, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. So I, you're right on the downloads. You can't really go figure out which one because so many people go back to do it. But I, my guess is the one that's Megan's viral one because I've seen it when it hits. Someone's like, "What? Where is that layout from?" There was always a bunch of downloads, but it's the April of 21. Oh, yeah. So let me switch that over. I'm going to replace Spotlight. Yes, that one. That one is, in fact, um, I never did get photos on that particular one, but we revisited that one as part of our most recent summer scrap. And I did get photos on it. And it was really fun to see um, all of our uh, people who participated with summer scrap with us to see their versions of it. And so, um, yeah, it's one of the, uh, my favorite ones. Um, so, and I as Shelly's saying that was her, for her first uh, power hour was the year when we did that. And I think that was probably the one where people got a really fun introduction to how, how hard can Megan make this? Or, you know, I don't know. I, feel like just... I, I mean, you definitely have more of the viral trend. I feel like there's one of mine that was popular now. I don't, I don't remember which one it was, but um, definitely Megan definitely wins that award of like because her layouts are so striking visually when she because she uses all those angles and i get the award for oh i forgot about i have that in my stash i should use it also so she's here to blow your mind with technique and i'm here to remind you of what's in the stash that lives behind us hey it, it works if people that um yeah everybody's saying they love it all. I mean, there's some people I know that are tuning in more for you and then they watch my stuff comes on. They're like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they pour the wine. I'm going to make Tessa's and watch Megan's. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, um, in terms of what we've got going on, uh, coming up, we have, um, I, we have Tessa and I need to do some discussions on what fall is going to look like as we go through. We have Autumn Cottage, we have Christmas Charms. We have Winter Frolic is going to be coming up. It's hard to imagine that type of stuff is coming, but it is. It's it's a January, knock on wood, will be here um, before we know it. And so um, we will have a Winter Frolic information coming out probably in the next month or so. I would say by the time we get to November's, um, um, this power hour, we'll have that, all those details. So um, in terms of what else is going on that we need to um, make them aware of, help me out here, Tessa, am I forgetting? I, we don't even have November's date yet, right? Um, we've um, got to look at a calendar. And... Do we even have a day for Autumn Cottage? Are we doing it next Thursday? <laughs> I don't know. Mine and I um, have struggled to actually work on the layouts. Everyone, no one's going to have any paper left by the time we do class. How many of you are waiting for class? Because if no one's waiting for it, we don't actually have to do it. <laughs> Diane is. I know. Yeah. I, I've been saving mine too. I, I have mine saved. Like I said, I was going to use it. I could open it tonight. I could have used it tonight, but um, I haven't. I know Ted, yeah, Tedra's waiting. Sandy's saying that she's waiting. So we have to do it. Um, and so here's what I get to say is I'm waiting for Tessa to do, because she said she would put hers together and then tell me what was left. And so um, that's the thing there. We are planning to do, I think we're pretty sure we're gonna, we'll, we will do a Christmas page makers. We just, again, need to sit there and um, have a discussion about dates and get that figured out. This year's um, 
uh, are we we're, are we just going to use cardstock um, for the extra or um, is that kind of, is that kind of discussion that we need to have because creative memories didn't exactly help us out with two paper packs this time so we need to look at these paper packs and determine what is our guidance for you guys and we will let you know that as soon as possible and give you ample of time if you need to order another paper pack or more cardstock we will have that you'll have a plenty of buffer in there to add it to your next order um, and get those um, those things in there. You guys, so, do, do most of you keep all the basic card stocks and stash, like the dark green and the sh shimmers and the cranberry? And because that's that's sometimes yeah. the delay of like telling people what to use because we advertise the class before we actually make the layouts. I know that's shocking. Um, so we don't always really know exactly, but uh, it makes it easier if we can just say have the basics. Everyone should have the rainbow by now, except for tangerine. That's completely optional. I make you buy that, but. Um, yeah, most people. Oh, I, want, I wanted to add spotlight. There we go. Um, yes, and to have it all, it's it's is pretty readily available to be able to get the colors you want to use. Um, the one thing I did notice though, with uh, the reason I asked whether we wanted to maybe use two paper two packs of paper is because they did. I'm pretty certain one side's tonal, one side's designer yeah, print. And so um, it does, and it obviously makes it super easy for us to say, you get a pack, I get a pack. But then we have to like make sure we're not emphasizing the same patterns together. It's hard, it's hard. You guys should see us negotiate these things sometimes. Yeah, um, I don't like to go first because one of us gets a little particular and a little moody sometimes on paper. And one of us is willing just to like use what's left. And so... <laughs> It, it does. It is. And, and I like to, um, I sometimes like to reverse the process so that um, it can, I don't then have to spend an extra hour to 90 minutes um, sorting out that basically I can be told here's what's left. Um, so it does save a little bit of time for me if I am not the first one so that I don't have that process um, to split it out and um, so forth. So there's a method to my madness this time. Um, and on, and on a cottage, you've already got, you already have, you just have to put it together and see what's left and then take what you want and tell me what you didn't take. Yeah, that's fine for autumn cottage. I think you should go first for Christmas. So, and I agree. I, I do think the two paper packs, cause they did, did, I haven't really opened it very well, but isn't the back really all tonal and the prints, like they really did flip them well. Sometimes they don't think flip so. the sides very well. I think they did this time. Um, they. Uh, I can double check, but we'll, we'll get, we'll get it figured out. We'll get a date. It'll probably be in November. Jenny's saying two paper packs is her vote. Probably more than likely what we'd be able to do is um, let you know that if you absolutely need two paper packs, or if you are able to get away instead where we use a tonal red out of the pack, you might be able to just use cranberry. You don't necessarily have to order a second pack. Um, CM is sold out of Autumn Cottage. Virginia, you are correct. They sold through that one, which makes, I told Tessa, like even myself, I think I have to have you send me a pack of paper. I didn't stock up on the paper packs. And so my ability to put a sample set together and then turn around and teach it again, I was a little limited, but, um, it is sold out. So, and then the handout, you have to have ordered the buy it all bundle to have the handout that was available with it. We will, we'll have a handout available. I can't remember how we're doing it, but we will have some available and you might be able to just convert it into other layouts or, you know, other use other um, collections to do so. So we'll, we'll you can just, we'll, it's, we'll, it's gonna we'll be, commit to that in the next week. Autumn Cottage is, and Autumn Cottage will be a free class. So you can just tune in, right? And, and catch the button or catch the recording later. Um, and then we'll have registration available soon for uh, Christmas charm. And for so. those of you that don't follow an advisor, the rolling cart is back through an advisor. So if you are interested in that, talk to Megan or I. Most of you probably know that because a lot of your advisors have one. But yes, yes. And, and you've got to jump on it quickly. It's um, we don't know how quickly a, a, this ordering window will close for this round. All right. Well, well, thanks you guys for joining us. I cover everything. Did you have anything else? No, I was just going to tell you happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Uh, is this a birthday happy or anniversary. anniversary? I don't know. Can we have two cakes? One for birthday and one for anniversary? I mean, 
I know. I think maybe I we have think. a glass of wine to celebrate the anniversary, and we have a cake to celebrate the birthday. Sounds That's great. True. So I didn't I didn't get one today because last night Campbell and I went shopping and then went to Cheesecake Factory for dinner. I found my favorite, the berry cherry Ghirardelli. Have any of you guys had that? Oh my gosh, it's like my new favorite. Do you have Cheesecake Factory in Phoenix? Oh yeah, yeah. They they were they're based out of West Coast. Lisa used to be. They were a West Coast. Um, when I worked for the healthcare um, health insurance company, they were one of my my clients. Um, but yes. At least I think they're West Coast. Based. They have to be West Coast based. Anyway, um, and a birthday. <laughs> yeah, that, that's funny. It's perfect. And a birthday. Um, yeah, I do. I I am a sucker for just an old fashioned Oreo cheesecake. Love Oreo cheesecake. That's like my favorite thing there. So I haven't been to Cheesecake Factory in forever. So one of these days, maybe when you come out here, we'll go to Cheesecake Factory. And I love their food. Cheesecake aside, I love the food. So yeah. All right. Oh, somebody had to have a question about the rolling cart. Uh, yes, your other stuff will ship separately. So Deborah's asking about it. If you order um, from an advisor, um, it will they will ship uh, the stuff. But it's yeah, it, that's how they have it set up. So all right, everybody, take care tonight. I do need to get going. We're gonna try to go out and see the comet. I need to get on the road for that. We have to do drive a little ways to get away from the city lights to try to see the comet. Apparently, it's out west. Like look to the west, and you can see it. We'll find out. All right. Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, the recording will get put up. It'll probably be a little bit late. It'll be definitely by tomorrow morning. It may roll out a little bit later tonight when I get back from the comment viewing. All right. Take care, everybody. We will see you all later.